Hey everybody, welcome to Lore Friday for January 28th, 2022. I'm your host, DM Galavond. Tonight on Lore Friday, we're going to take a look at the next adventure from the Out of the Abyss campaign. This one is called Hook Horror Hunt. But before we get into that, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and click the post notification bell so that you get notified every time new content drops. The Hook Horror Hunt takes place in a little maze of tunnels somewhere deep in the Underdark. And the theme of this one is that you have to evade hunters and hunted creatures in a labyrinth of tunnels while a pack of gnolls looks for or hunts for hook horrors and those gnolls will gladly attack any creatures that get in their way so the setting for this is once again a labyrinth of tunnels somewhere in the underdark wilderness so in between those civilized settlements of humanoids that call the underdark home now a teaser for this one is that the party has become lost in a maze of tunnels when they stumble onto a knoll camp suddenly a hunting cry signals the presence of more knolls nearby and the cries glow, grow closer so as the party try to escape from the knolls they may come face to face with a monster from a nightmare. The nightmare in this case turns out to be a hook horror, and it is the object of the Knoll's hunt. So the adventure here can play out in several ways. First of all, the party might find a way to elude the Knolls and the other monsters and make their way through the labyrinth to the other side. They would likely be chased by the gnolls guarding their campsite unless the PCs make some lucky stealth rolls to avoid, avoid being noticed or unless they are very patient and they wait until the cries of the gnolls being attacked by the hook horrors they've been hunting draws the other gnolls away from the camp, leaving them a clear way out. So that's one way that the adventure could play out. Another way this could end is if the PCs determine the gnolls are hunting the hook horrors. In that case, they could, you know, they could decide to take sides. They might decide they would help the gnolls and help them hunt the hook horrors and hope that once they do that, they could sort of negotiate their way out. Um, so that the gnolls are satisfied with their trophies and the party can get away. Or they might flip that around and they might decide, oh, the hook horrors are being hunted by these awful gnolls. Well, let's go help the hook horrors and fight against the gnolls along with the hook horrors and then hope that the hook horrors don't turn around and attack them. Or they could take another again kind of a patient wait and see approach and they could wait until the gnolls and the hook horrors engage with each other and watch that battle unfold and then when the monsters from one side have vanquished the monsters from the other side and the survivors are all beaten up then the party could come in and attack the victors and that way wipe out all the monsters and get everything for themselves so it's really set up in many different ways the party could choose to handle this and as a dm it's kind of fun to see what the party is going to decide to do in situations like this so i you know i have an inkling with the three games that i run probably there would be three different choices that those groups would make uh, if they were encountered if they were encountering this particular situation during the hunt for the hook horrors the gnolls utter war cries to their god yinagu and the fact that these creatures normally found in the hills and grasslands are hunting in the underdark seemingly drawn here by their patron deity is a connection to the main campaign story arc about the demon lords being summoned into the underdark 
So a unique feature about this little adventure is that the PCs may find a hook horror nest complete with eggs that are almost ready to hatch. Now, the only way the PCs could reach this is if the hook horrors themselves have been killed and the gnolls have subsequently been driven off or killed. Otherwise, the adult hook horrors will tend the nest or the gnolls will not let the party take something that the gnolls believe is their treasure without a fight. And the easiest way of making a creature angry is get between a parent creature and its hatchling or its unhatched hatchling, as the case may be. So the hook horrors aren't, you know, they're not going to give eggs to the party members, that's for sure. So the adventure does include notes on hook horror hatchlings and a maturation table for these monsters. It seems from the lore they present here that hook horror hatchlings will imprint on the first creature they see and deem that creature to be their parent. Thereafter, the hatchling follows that creature and demands food. So if the hatchling is raised to adulthood, it could it could potentially become a powerful ally or a smarter than average pet. Hook horrors have an intelligence of six, meaning that they have their own rudimentary language and an adventuring party might adopt and raise one of these monsters the same way some adventure parties adopt and raise owl bears, griffins, or other semi-intelligent creatures that populate the pages of the monster manual. The most common enemy that you are going to find in this particular adventure are gnolls. There's an entire pack which is led by a gnoll pack leader. Now these gnolls are spread out into different areas so there are keyed encounters with groups of gnolls. That means that the way this adventure is written, the toughest encounter is against a pair of hook horrors, which are CR3 monsters. However, if the party is unlucky, or if the party makes some tactical blunders, they might wind up drawing the entire pack of gnolls onto them, which consists of 11 gnolls and a gnoll pack leader. If that happens to the PCs, you have to decide as a DM, well, if those hook horrors are still alive, are they going to intervene? You know, are they going to see the gnolls as the biggest threat and go attack them? Or are they just going to take that opportunity to get out of sight and, you know, try to stay away and hope that the PCs kill the gnolls and go away? You'd have to make that call special creatures or items that include or that are included in this adventure the party could find hook horror eggs which will quickly become hook horror hatchlings the adventure includes a table showing the time and the changes in the stat block for hook horrors as they pass through the four stages of maturity from a hatchling to an adult now my favorite elements of the adventure i always love the maps dnd so the labyrinth that includes the knoll campsite and the hook horror lair would make a nice drop in for any kind of subterranean campaign arc populated with whatever kind of creatures you want to add. And every D&D group has that one player that wants to raise a baby monster. So the addition of the hook horror nest is a detail which will make some DMs smile and make others want to pull their hair out. So the easiest homebrew adaptation here, this adventure is suitable for any campaign arc involving Underdark travel and use with other editions. Well, the hook horrors have been around since at least third edition and maybe they were introduced earlier. I think the first source that I have that has them in is the is third edition. So you could use it with other editions. And if you're using it with an edition where the hook horrors weren't yet introduced, it's easy enough to change that into some other kind of subterranean monster that has about the same threat level as a hook horror. Keep the gnolls in there, because the gnolls have been in there forever, uh, have been in D&D forever. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. That's going to do it for our look at the hook horror hunt and next time you can join us here on lore friday when we will be looking at the tomb of kayam 
If you have been watching this far, please, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, click the post notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time new content drops on the channel. Once again, I have been DM Galabon. This has been Lore Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great evening. Good night, everybody.